guys. Welcome back to Texas Platinum. Thanks for tuning in as always. We're back in the studio. Matt Madrid doesn't have a webcam right now, but that's coming shortly. Uh, but yeah, please subscribe. We're on the push for, it was 3K subs by the Arkansas game, but we're going to lower it to 2K because we're definitely not going to hit 3K. So, <laughs> so definitely subscribe and uh, thanks for watching as always. Um, yeah, t- today what we're going to do is look at this schedule that the Longhorns have coming up in 2021 and Quite frankly, it's a pretty tough schedule. I mean, it's the fourth toughest schedule in the football power index, which is uh, – it seems like every year we have a really hard schedule, um, which, I mean, playing in the Big 12, people don't really think that the Big 12 ever has tough schedules. But this schedule is very tricky. And we're going to go down go down the line and rank 1 through 12, the toughest to easiest games. And um, there aren't many easy wins on here, I'll say that. So, Trevor – How's it going, my man? How are you feeling about this the schedule coming up? It's going well. I mean, schedule wise, uh, I think one thing that we discussed when we did that way too early preview. Gosh, when was that? Back in, I want to say March, maybe April. We did a video, so go check that out if you haven't already. But um, yeah, we we talked about how it's kind of almost broken into like chunks in terms of like each chunk is going to have some tough games in it. So opening the season, obviously Louisiana Lafayette and Arkansas are both going to be games that may not be the hardest on the schedule, but they're definitely not cakewalk games. Those are pretty challenging, you know, potential losses um, and maybe even both of them. Um, And then of course you get into TCU and Oklahoma back to back. And, and and I guess the season kind of easy, gets a little bit more easy to end the season, but you also have Iowa state in the mix towards the end. Um, and that'll be a big game, assuming that Texas is uh, at least somewhat competitive <laughs> in the big 12, which hopefully they are. Um, so it's moderately spread out in terms of like the hardest games and the, and some of the easier ones, but it's still like consistently pretty difficult across the board. So um, it'll definitely be a challenge, which is unfortunate that Sark has to face that uh, so soon, so early in his career, uh, coupled with all the other struggles that maybe we'll talk about in an upcoming video or two (laughs) um, in terms of recruiting and just a lot of other things right now. Um, But yeah, uh, Madrid, you got anything in terms of schedules before we hop into the actual games yeah i just want to hope you guys enjoy my flower crown picture it was a nice fiesta weekend um i got myself like two of them they're really nice you should, you should enjoy it i do it <laughs> anything in terms of the schedule madrid <laughs> matt said it earlier is that we're always we're always uh having some kind of tough schedule right um but uh, a lot of these games to me seem a little more uh, trap gamey ish. If that twelve, especially with the K states, Oklahoma states, and all that, I really only see like four, maybe three for sure wins. But other than that, knowing <clears throat> knowing the history of Texas and what we like to do to ourselves, um, some of them could go either way. But um. I think I think it'll be an entertaining season for sure. Um, just just by the mere talent that we have, we're going against. So yeah, yeah, I agree. It's gonna be it's gonna be tricky, man. There's not like like we said, there's not many easy Prairie View A and M's or Akron's on the schedule. So yeah, um, yeah. So let's just go down the line right now. Might as well. I mean, obviously. So we all did our own versions of ranking these uh, games from toughest to easiest. And we kind of came together with an average. I mean, they were all pretty similar to begin with, but we took the average of that and we kind of did one just, you know, Texas Platinum, toughest toughest to easiest schedule ranking. And, and starting at the top, we have Oklahoma and Dallas. I mean, obviously that's always going to be like the biggest challenge. And I say that because, yeah, OU's the best team on the schedule, but that game for some reason, I mean, it's because it's a rivalry. Even if we're terrible and they're really good, it's probably going to be a close, close game. So we'll always have that going for us, but. Yeah, just playing OU in Dallas is going to be really difficult because this is the best OU team we've seen in probably since 2017 or 2008. Uh, they actually have a good defense now with Alex Grinch, and they return a bunch of starters, had a bunch of key transfers. Uh, they still have Spencer Rattler, 
and they're just they have Lincoln Riley. So it's going to definitely be you know beating OU. They've won six Big Twelve titles in a row. Um, they're favored to win the Big Twelve again, and everybody's saying this is their year to win the national championship finally. So uh, that's going to be definitely a tough challenge, but I think we'll get it done in Dallas. Just teaser, but uh, yeah, OU. OU's our toughest game by far, and our second toughest game uh, is traveling to Ames to play Iowa State. Um, you know, Iowa State was really good last year, obviously, with Matt Campbell. Um, and they returned literally their entire team, Brees Hall, uh, their tight end, Brock Purdy. They lose some of their D-line, but still, they returned, like, I believe, 20 starters. So, yeah, I mean, expect more of the same from our – Iowa State and going to Ames is always tough. And the fact that we play them there in November is going to be really frightening because I don't think we played in the snow in a long time. I think 2006 uh, when we played at Nebraska was the last time. And uh, I think this season with Ames and Morgantown in November are definitely snow game candidates. And I don't trust us in the snow at all in hostile environments. So yeah, toughest two games, Oklahoma, number one, and number two is definitely at Iowa State. What you got, Trevor? Yeah, definitely agree with that. That was that was one commonality that we all had across the board in terms of ranking these with Oklahoma and Iowa State. I mean, just as you said, Oklahoma, um, this is by far probably the best team that they've had since, since they were in a national title uh, back in 08. Um, so, I mean, offensively, they're very complete. The only only part of their offense that I would say, like, we maybe have an advantage with is their offensive line, ironically. Uh, but that's only because they're kind of going through some new guys transitioning and stuff. But they'll, they're going to bolster that. They got talented guys. Um, the one thing that I think Texas could always kind of hold its hat on, not that it really mattered at the end of the day, but it, is that technically we'd – usually have maybe the slight talent edge over Oklahoma in the past. Um, but I personally don't believe we can say that anymore, especially with this team. They, they are more talented. They are better coached, um, at least at the moment. Uh, we'll see what Sark and the staff can do. But for the time being, more talented, better coached, uh, better experienced, um, better transfers that entered in. They got some really key transfers. I mean, we did get a few as well that – might become key transfers, but at least in terms of the resumes, OU's transfers are way more um, talented and bona fide. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, it, and it just being in a hostile environment. I mean, I know this 50-50 split, but that's still difficult for both teams to play in. And let's be real, Oklahoma fans really pack it in. I mean, I know Texas does too, but um Oklahoma definitely loves going to that Red River game. Not that, again, not that we don't, but they take it extremely seriously. Texas takes it very seriously, but I would say that Oklahoma takes it into the extreme. And then uh, Iowa State game, yeah, just like you said, it's going to be in November. Um, if Texas is doing well um, and has a good season, that will be a pivotal game for likely the Big 12 title. Um, Iowa State should be able to make it there uh, based off of their returning production. They're probably the most experienced team in the country. Well, not experienced, but most returning starters and just continuity. Um, the coaching staff has all stayed around uh, for the most part. I mean, it's, this is kind of their do it, do or die year and playing in Ames is always weird. And I guarantee you it'll probably be a night game unless Texas is really bad. Um, which hopefully isn't the case. So night games in Iowa are always just difficult as it is. Couple that with the whole end of the season stakes that you're going to have, um, as well as uh, just kind of the storylines behind it. You know, um, Bijan versus Brees Hall is probably going to be a compelling storyline that they're going to want to highlight. Um, Brock Purdy's, you know, last shot, that'll probably be a big thing as well. So it's got big game implications written all over it. Uh, and the fact that it's on the road um, makes it even more difficult. Um, so, yeah, definitely those top two, I think we're all in agreement with. Madrid, do you have any final thoughts on those before before we move on? Yeah, just to quickly add, uh, I feel like OU in uh, Iowa State for the last, like, two years has always been, ah, it's those two games, right? Um, OU for sure, you t touched on the transfers. Uh, 
I like what they did in the receiver transfer room, too. You got that one receiver from Arkansas. He see, looks like he's going to fit in pretty well there. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, – you also said, too, when uh, – this is one of those years that OU just feels, man, like they are really on top of, like, everything. All the – they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's on every every level of the field, and that's really intimidating uh, for me, uh, for me at least, and probably for the team as too. Uh, I feel like that's going to be, like, a huge – Huge. The way Sark comes out against OU is just going to set the tone for, like, years to come. Like, I just have this feeling, like, either they're going to – the recruits are going to choose OU or choose OU or Texas just because of that game. Because the, just the compelling compelling narratives going into that game are going to be, like, Sark, is he, is, he that, is, he, is he that good year one? Is, he, is his system – does it hold up well against this type of uh, rivalry game? And then it, and then on the OU side is like, could this, could this young upcoming upstart retooling UT team uh, uh, take the throne? Um, so that's is what's really compelling uh, for OU for me at least. And then just shortly on the Iowa State side, I feel like every year I'm kind of like, man, they're returning a lot of guys. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna win the Big Twelve. And I picked them to win the Big Twelve. I think last year, and if not the year before that too. And that was just a wrong decision obviously looking back but like they're still formidable because of that that returning talent um and, and if regular season wise so i just wouldn't hope uh, uh i just wouldn't uh, um bet on them for big 12 at least this time maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong again for zagging but yeah so yeah those two always at the top for the last two years they're just those just gonna be thorns in our sides really yeah definitely yeah, that Lincoln versus Sark matchup is going to be – It's going to be spicy. Really good TV. So, yeah, we got OU at one, this toughest, and number two is at Iowa State. All right, so the next three games we couldn't really decide on. I mean, it was tough. We, averaged, we averaged them out, and we have our official rankings, but we had a lot of disagreements here. But for the third toughest game, we had TCU traveling to Fort Worth against the new Purple Kryptonite. Uh, we, Gary Patterson – literally is just like i think part of his self-worth is his ability to coach up a team to beat texas every year oh yeah and um that's ultimately what, what helped get tom herman fired and charlie strong fired uh being un- unable to beat texas christian consistently over the last decade has been really really annoying and and, and and this year we travel to Fort Worth, the place we've won one time since they joined the Big Twelve. It's always it always goes horribly there. It seems like um, in recent history, and not only that, but they actually have a good team this year. I mean, they got Zach Evans back as a sophomore. Quentin Johnston, the one that got away, is a star receiver for them. He's going to be a sophomore as well. And then they got Max Duggan still there, um, and they have O'Shawn Mathis on that defense, and then. Uh, they have a good secondary. It's a Gary Patterson defense. So they have a good team. I actually think that they might be in the Big 12 championship uh, to look ahead to our conference championship predictions. Uh, but, yeah, TCU is going to be really good this year, in my opinion. And it's kind of a make or break year for Gary Patterson at this point. I mean, it's kind of the stars of a line trying to make a run this year. And if he doesn't this year, it's kind of like, when will he? Or is it over for him, you know, past his prime? So, yeah, I think playing in – Fort Worth is going to be definitely tr- tricky, and I hate I hate that it comes right before the OU game. I hate when we lose going into the Oklahoma game. It just kind of kills the steam, and it really puts our team in a bad spot, I feel like. So that's going to be a tough two-game stretch right there, o- TCU then playing OU in Dallas. But, uh, yeah, we have TCU at three. And then for number four, this one was really close. We couldn't decide between West Virginia and Arkansas, but we ended up putting Arkansas as the fourth toughest game. I mean – Traveling to Fayetteville to play an old rival that definitely has this game uh, circled on their on their calendar. That's never an easy task. And, uh, you know, you're going into SEC country, so their fans would go, go a little extra harder than most fans. Um, I don't know if they go dangerously hard, but they go pretty hard. Uh, but they have they have Sam Pittman in year two. They have really good offensive coordinator, good defensive coordinator, um, really good defense led by Jalen Catalan. I mean, we had a video with – an Arkansas guy, Ty Hudson, on. He, talk, he talked about their team, and uh, they seem pretty – they have good receivers. They have a pretty good team, and uh, they've definitely made some big strides over the last last season. They, they made some big strides. So that's definitely not going to be a cakewalk by any means. But to be fair, they did go 3-7 and seven last year, so you can't, you can't lose sight of that. But uh, playing at Arkansas 
an old Southwest Conference rival. That's going to be definitely a close game, in my opinion. And and if we were to win that game comfortably, I think that'd be a great sign in week two for uh, what we're going to get with Sark here uh, to start off, you know, his tenure at Texas. So, yeah, Arkansas, we put it four. And then number five was West Virginia. Uh, traveling to Morgantown in uh, late November uh, sounds – it's going to be very cold and probably – probably snowing like I was like I was saying earlier and I mean West Virginia likes to think they're a rival of Texas now too for some reason they love throwing the horns down uh last time we played there it was a pretty electric atmosphere for when when Texas came to town and I would imagine it'd be the same thing this year they have Dante Stills back uh really good defensive lineman they have the quarterback back Letty Brown's back and uh, Neil Brown's been there for a uh, I think it's two years now and he's kind of getting his the players he wants so I think they're going to be a one of the better teams in the middle pack of the big 12. So I think playing in Morgantown late in the season is going to be extremely challenging. And I, personally, I think that's tougher than West Virginia. I, mean, I think that's tougher than playing at Arkansas, but uh, either way, this, this three game stretch of TCU, Arkansas, West Virginia, is going to be really challenging. It's not a stretch. I shouldn't say, but these three games that we pair together are really just like games that I don't like that they, they give me bad vibes. So Trevor, what do you think about this uh, TCU, Arkansas, West Virginia grouping of games? Yeah, so how I, how I had it ranked was I actually had Arkansas at three, then I had TCU, then I had West Virginia. Um, my reasoning for having Arkansas higher is I think that Arkansas, at least from a talent perspective, I think Arkansas and TCU are pretty comparable, uh, but I would – probably give the edge to Arkansas uh, that could be SEC bias but um, and the fact that TCU has like they haven't quite like they've kind of been in like a gray limbo you know situation for a while I'm not saying that Arkansas isn't in that similar type situation but at least from my gut I feel that Arkansas probably has the slightly better team and probably the higher the well and well, it will be the more hostile environment. I mean, that's going to be a, we already know it's going to be a primetime game uh, at Arkansas. Um, and those uh, fans hate Texas probably more than TCU fans. And I know TCU fans definitely hate Texas too, but uh, let's be real, uh, you know, playing in Razorback Stadium versus <laughs> playing at TCU is uh, a whole nother thing. Um, so for that reason, I ranked Arkansas higher, uh, just the stakes and it's earlier in the season, I think only by like two games, but still nonetheless, two games is a big difference, especially earlier on when you're trying to figure out the, the offense and the defense. And I mean, it's a lot of newness for this team in general. So that early game at Arkansas, I think definitely, in my opinion, might be a little bit harder than TCU, but I got TCU following that. And then uh, I agreed with the West Virginia ranking at five. Um, they got they got a pretty talented team. They played us pretty close last year, and they always do. Playing in Morgantown is always a challenge. Um, it is weird with our rivalry. Well, rivalry, you know, our our our. Uh, every time we square off against West Virginia, it seems like the away team wins the game, generally outside of last season. So. Um, I guess that's in our favor, but still, that's that's a hard place to play. They're a good team. They really hate Texas, and um, yeah, and I'm I'm feeling much better about Neil Brown uh, being a few years in. I think he's a pretty good coach, and um, yeah, I just expect them to definitely be up for us against Texas, and I think that their talent level is kind of right in the middle of the pack in terms of the Big Twelve. So, um, yeah. So I, those are the rankings that I have. Madrid, do you have any additional? Points? Yeah. Um, so I did it. I think I had it was a little more uh, different than you guys on this one. So I had TCU at three, West Virginia at four, and then Arkansas at five. Um, and I kind of get why y'all had Arkansas um, a little higher than me. But I don't know. I just kind of think going into that game, it's more of a uh, – it's a hype game for sure. Um, obviously it's like a, it's an old school type of slug match from the eighties or Southwest conference and stuff like that. But I think this team, I mean, I mean, they did Sam Pittman has like Sam Pittman was a good coach, but he has a, a job ahead of him for sure. I mean, they went three and seven last year, Matt said earlier. So like, you can't, can't just throw that out the window. Like granted it was a COVID year, I guess, but like 
I don't know, three and seven is pretty atrocious. Um, if anything, I, I'd probably be scared of like their their uh, the uh, the receivers and just like how big they are. Like Traylon Burks is like six three. He's like third Brennan Ingles. Doesn't get enough attention probably. Um, but this team is really just going to go as far as like KJ Jefferson is going to take them, and he's what the second year. Um, I remember, um, I remember, uh, I forget what it was. Uh, anyways, I was reading, uh, I was watching a video, and, and it said KJ Jefferson sees himself as like a Deshaun Watson type. I'm gonna slow his slow his roll a little bit right there. Um, watching some of his highlights, there's a little bit more of a Sam El- Ellinger, JT Barrett going down the middle, Q- QB draws, which is fine. I think there'll be a better team the next year, but I think I think the reason we some of some of us UT fans are hesitant is we we remember the older matchups, and I just don't think that's the same. Granted, it's going to be Casey and Sark's like first like true uh, test on the road and whatnot, but I just don't. I just think talent wise, we will we'll be able to overcome that pretty well. Um, that's why that's why I had the four Big Twelve teams uh, before them. So like at, with TCU, uh, Trevor, uh, I think it was. I'm sorry, you, you or Trevor, uh, Matt or Trevor said this, but like basically, it's the reason Gary Patterson is still there is because he beats Texas. So like the last nine years, basically decade, he's seven and two against us. And uh, I don't know if you guys caught uh, right before we started recording, uh, the uh, Gary Patterson was quoted at the at the big 12 media day when he was asked. So, uh, so he said, so going seven, two against Texas in the last year, what does that mean to you? And he said, well, it means I still have my job and he's right. And it's just so funny because we gauge for some reason, I think, in the, uh, especially when I started getting heavily involved in Texas football, uh, the past uh, few years is just like you gauge each season, how you do against TCU really. Like if you lose against TCU, man, is it like a horrible, horrible year you 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 beat tcu or we're going to big 12 championship or something or close to it right um so yeah that's why they're like a solid three for me um and then west virginia um i just think they're probably gonna get a little bit better i love letty brown last year um i didn't get to have him in fantasy but he was really good jared daigie who i made fun of last year is probably gonna take a little bit of a stride too but again the timing in the matchup the timing of the, the 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 matchup during the season is a little alarming too um playing in morgantown we got a lot of away games this year that are kind of scary that we don't talk about enough but yeah that's why i have those uh, games higher uh than uh, uh in the toughness ranking than arkansas just because i think those teams especially with tcu and west virginia are going to have more to play for obviously because it's in conference i think arkansas is more of a hype matchup thing um granted i still an sec team so they could still beat us up if they wanted to but I really don't see that happening, but that's why I have them in the middle of the pack really. So yeah, West Virginia and TCU over Arkansas for me. And I think all of our arguments are very valid. I think, yeah. I think you can put those in any order really. And I don't think anyone can really dispute that. So yeah, it's I like close. how we all gave our opinion on why they're slightly different. Mm-hmm, but, definitely. Uh, yeah. Right. And uh, you're right, man. We do play a lot of challenging road games. Uh, um, it, it's at Iowa State. It's going to be – we'll see how it goes. But uh, all right, so number six, we unanimously decided finally on uh, a team, a, a ranking of toughness, and it's Louisiana Lafayette at the sixth toughest game on the schedule for us. Um Louisiana Lafayette, I actually put a video out on them a couple days ago, but, I mean, they're very well known now in college football. They're kind of the darlings of college football right now with Billy Napier. Uh, they went 11-3 and three in 2019, went 9-1 and last year, and they returned literally. So it's uh, kind of frightening. You know, they have their fifth-year quarterback, like Levi Lewis is back, like their whole offensive line. They're a really good team, but they do play in the Sun Belt. Uh, they beat Iowa State last year, which everybody's pointing to as the reason why Texas could lose this game. And I, I'm more concerned because it's the first game of the Sark era. You just never know what to expect. It could be a dumpster fire like Texas against Maryland in 2017, or it could be, you know, a big win to start off the Sark era. I mean, it's just there's so many just unknowns, mainly on the Texas side. We know what we're going to see in Louisiana. They're a good above average football team, but it's just kind of what are we going to look like with Sark in week one. So that's kind of 
part of the reason I'm really I, I put this t- game in the category of a toss up. But uh, yeah, what do you think about this game, Trevor? Yeah, I think you said just about everything that I think all Texas fans are really feeling. It's just with it being the first game. Uh, first games with a new coach are always a little tricky, um, at least in my experience watching this team. Um, and it's typically good to have, you know, kind of a cupcake to like, you know, figure out how everything works and, 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 you know, be able to afford making a few mistakes and as well as risks without um, massive implications. But with this team, it's definitely not that kind of a game. Um, they're a very solid team. They're very, uh, they return a lot of talent. They're very established. Um, I like their coach a lot. And uh, yeah. It, and I mean, really just the whole first game thing, I think is what, like, like you said, is what makes this so difficult. Um, so it, I don't expect us to lose kind of like yourself Myers that you said in that video. Um, but at the same time, I do expect it to be kind of a close game. Kind of, almost like it wouldn't shock me if it was kind of like that that game against Tulsa that we had. Um, that may have been the oh, – what season was that, 2018, I think? That was Sam's sophomore year, I think. Yeah. Or, or freshman year. I'm not too – I don't – I think it was a sophomore year. Sophomore year, yeah. Because yeah. then we played USC and then yeah. got on that roll. That was a scary game. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I wouldn't expect us to have a game – similar to that hopefully that's not the case hopefully with sark you know he rolls out the offense and we score a lot of points and it's not a low scoring affair like that game was but um i do expect it to be definitely competitive um but at least we have the advantage of being at home um everyone's going to be excited to be back in dkr with the new turf and the new end zone and all the newness um it should make for a great environment um which i think is also something that myers pointed to in that video so um yeah definitely going to be a tough game a challenge but um i'm not horribly worried about it either but i could be knock on wood <laughs> no I, I i feel you um yeah you guys said it all really it, but the thing is it's, it's kind of it reminds me of the law tech game we'll just kind of psych ourselves out, out for it there'll be like a concerning stat or something like oh, oh my god they they passed all over us, but like, I mean, that has to go with like game, game speed and, and what, what how the, the, the pace of the game is going and stuff. But uh, we look back at law tech now and we don't even flinch. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think it will just be more of a uh, anxious uh, uh, waiting. And then uh, I think we'll, we'll mop up pretty well there. Yeah. That's a really good point. I forgot about how hyped up law tech was. Yeah, exactly. Before. It was like the same thing with like, Oh my God, like I have a bunch of, returning stars and stuff like that but I, I just don't think i think we, we could still handle them talent wise yeah we should i mean that's why we hired sark to win games like this that we should win so yeah we had louisiana lafayette at number six uh at seven and eight uh we really we were struggling between k-state and oklahoma state we ultimately settled on k-state at, at the seventh toughest game uh k-state uh with skylar thompson back for like his 20th year uh, they still have Deuce Vaughn there, who's just really frightening. I mean, he tore us, up, he tore up our defense last year. He's from Texas. He's from Austin. It's going to be one of those players that's like a, a Texas killer, it's, it seems. And um, they return 15 starters. So they're a good football team. Luckily, we get them in Austin. So that kind of makes it a lot more manageable, in my opinion. But we put K-State at seven and uh, Oklahoma State at eight. So uh, and Oklahoma State's also good. But uh, Spencer Sanders, I mean, he's good, but very – you can you can rattle them pretty easily, it seems like. And uh, they do have Brendan Presley, that new receiver of theirs, who's next up for Oklahoma State. They always have a star, and Brendan Presley is the real deal. So uh, I'm sure playing them will be challenging, but we're in DKR, not in Stillwater. So uh, hopefully we win both these games against K-State and Oklahoma State. Yeah, um, I think both Madrid and I agreed with the um... – yeah, I had him seven and eight. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think you Myers were actually the only one that had it flipped. So when we come back to you, I'm curious if you could speak a little bit as to why. Um, but yeah, I got K State higher. Um uh mostly because of Deuce Vaughn. That guy is a baller. Um, and I'm really excited to see how he does in his second year and see if he can capitalize and continue to grow. Um, and also just the fact of you know, that's gonna be his return to Austin. It's going to be another one of those storylines of the one that got away that we hear every freaking year because we're Texas, you know. Um, and uh, 
And I mean, they're they're, they're we obviously beat the brakes out of the uh, out of them last year, but they're generally a pretty well coached team. Um, they got Skylar Thompson back, who definitely isn't a world beater. Like we we've handled him fine, you know, every year that we've played him, but you know, experienced senior, definitely something to be aware of. Not, not some young guy that can be easily rattled. Um, and I, and also just uh, Oklahoma state to me is in a slight bit of a transition phase. I mean, Mike Gundy against Texas is also, uh, typically pretty difficult. Um, we have beat them the last two years in the row, so they're probably coming for blood at this point because that's not usual for them, especially at DKR. That's always a place that they seem to win outside of two seasons back. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, I, you could definitely say those two games are a bit of a toss-up too, and either order makes sense. But I'm picking Kansas State but just because I think all around they – have a slightly just by a teeny bit better roster um and i think at the end of the day it comes down to the the better player in in a in a you know star in in deuce vaughn versus um oklahoma state that really i i can't think of i mean maybe i just am not well researched on the team but i can't think of many stars right now outside of potentially spencer sanders and like myra said that guy um at a, at a ceiling he's great because when he first played in DKR, you know, a few years back, he was freaking amazing. And I was like, oh, God, that guy's going to be like a Heisman candidate by the end of his tenure. But um, last season, he was super inconsistent. So and and their backup quarterback was actually pretty good, um, whose name I can never seem to remember. So, yeah, I think either you can go either way, but I'm choosing Kansas State because of the bigger star. Yeah, for me, uh, better player, Deuce Vaughn. I think Kleiman. Climate has a lot to work to do uh, with uh, Skyler Thompson still there. Uh, but the, their freshman, Jake Rubley, looks kind of promising, but I don't know if that's going to happen this year. Uh, but, yeah, it's more of a better player thing for me too. And as regard with uh, the Cowboys, um, look, if there's, their office is, is, is always going to be there, but it's super untested right now. They got a lot of production to, uh, to, to fill with Wallace and Chuba gone. Um, Matt, you named some of the receivers that that are interesting, but I just don't think they have anyone on the roster that can do what those two were doing for them for the past few years. And surprisingly, and uh, a little bit uh, so ironic, but uh, and surprising um, is that the defense brings back a lot more of its star- stars than the offense. So it could be a year where the the, the defense carries a little bit of, of, of Oklahoma State team, which is kind of weird to say. But uh, yeah. I, without their potent offense and with Spencer Sanders just being up and down and just turnover prone. I don't, I think he gets stuck in the mud. And I, I think I'm for the past two years, I haven't, have been too, too worried about a Spencer Sanders uh, blow up, but maybe it's this year. Yeah, you're right. I mean, losing Chuba and Tylen hurts, but they got LB Brown. He's pretty good too. I mean, he filled in nicely whenever Chuba was, was That's not fair. playing well last season. So they got some weapons. They always do. They always – they just, like – they re- reload every year, it seems like. So I'm sure they'll have something up their sleeve. And Mike Gundy loves beating Texas too. So – but, yeah, either way, K-State and Oklahoma State are both – I put them in the same tier. Those are both challenging games that we can't take for granted or, or we'll lose straight up. So, yeah, we had those at 7 and 8. At number 9 and 10, we had another, you know, split decision on Baylor and Texas Tech. Uh, I thought Tech would be a tougher game than at Baylor. Uh, Matt, Trevor and Matt thought Baylor on the road is tougher than Tech. I, I like Tech a lot this year, but uh, we'll start off with Baylor at number nine. Uh, Dave Aranda, this is actually his first real year now. I mean, the COVID year as a first-year head coach uh, is really tough to get anything set up. So uh, they weren't horrible last year, but they definitely weren't as good as they were under Matt Rule at all. But um, they do have Terrell Bernard back. I'm not sure. Uh, what other kind of personnel they have on defense, but uh, um, they need to put Jacob Zeno at quarterback. That's all I know. He's really good for them. I don't know why he's not playing for them, but Baylor, whenever you travel to, to Waco, I mean, we should take care of business, but um, since it's on the road, I, I, I kind of put it in a, it's not really a toss up, but it's a game that uh, it's kind of a little concerning, but I, I think we won this one comfortably. And uh, at 10, I have tech. Uh, I like tech a lot. So Roderick Thompson's back. Uh, they have good receivers. They always do, especially this year. 
Um, and it's kind of now or never for Matt Wills. He's in a contract year pretty much. They're going to fire him if he doesn't do anything this year. So, um, and we play him early in the season. Uh, I think it's like our first Big 12 game is Texas Tech. So uh, that's going to be a challenge for us, I think. But it's at DKR, so we should take care of business there. Yeah, so kind of the reason that I had it ranked uh, with Baylor and Tech, I mean, I think they're pretty even. Team. I mean, Tech, you might get the talent edge a little bit, but I'm going with Baylor just because it's on the road. Uh, that, that was kind of my logic. Um, we've we never played great in Waco. I mean, well, I could, I'm kind of wrong about that, but at least maybe it's just because that last time we played in Waco, it was so bad <laughs> that I'm kind of scared of playing there. Of course, that was with Rule and when they were, you know, at their peak. But um, yeah, I mean, I, Dave Miranda, I honestly, last season, I was a little impressed with him because I would have thought uh, with all the COVID crap that they dealed with and uh, new coaches and like all this, like, you know, dismay, they, they actually were decent. And, um, and I don't know, I, I think that they really have an opportunity to rebuild. Um, on the other hand, tech to me always feels like they're in dismay a bit, <laughs> not to, not to insult Texas tech, but, um, yeah, uh, I don't feel, I mean, what is Texas Tech's quarterback situation? Like, that's one thing. They just brought in a transfer. Yeah. I forget his name. Alan, Alan the Bo- Boeing guy finally left. Yeah, Bowman's trans- in Michigan, which yeah. that'll be an interesting thing to Bowling, watch. Bowman, yeah. Um, they brought in Tyler Schrau or something from Oregon, and he's supposed yeah. to be, like, really good, real deal NFL draft potential. But mm-hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, Tech, yeah, I – I, I like Sir Roderick a lot. That guy was pretty good. But I really, to me, it's a toss-up. Again, you can argue either way between these two games, I think, and have a reasonable argument. But for me, it's more just road game versus home game. So that's that's really what it came down to. That and I that's think fair. I like Aranda a little bit more than, than a text coach whose name is slipping my mind. <laughs> That shows you how, <laughs> how, <laughs> how uh, unsuc- not unsuccessful, but how just meh he's been. Uh, yeah. No, off- no offense to him, but I mean, it, it's no different than when Kingsbury was there, honestly. And I think Kingsbury may have been a little bit better. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I don't see. Yeah. I think these two are a little bit toss up for me as well. I mean, I had Baylor 9, Tech 10. But Matt said some things that make a little bit more sense. But then I just think if I'm going to do, like, the whole, like, best player thing, it'd be, like, Sir Roderick, right? But, like, I don't know. That that guy's always injury-prone for me. Um, and then Tech just never plays defense. I do like Dave Aranda better. He's, that 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 just makes sense. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with Baylor 9, Tech 10. I just don't have high hopes for Tech at all. I mean, they're they're have their passing offense and they'll do what they do, but I just don't see them actually doing anything. Uh, or, or I think Baylor, it's in Waco, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think going to Waco is a little weirder than having Texas Tech at home. That for for doing a toughness thing. So yeah, I'll stick with Baylor, uh, slightly tougher at nine than Tech. So yeah, definitely definitely Baylor at nine. And TJ Vasher is gone too. Yeah, that guy, that guy haunted our it's dreams. Just, it's just hit. It's a uh, who's the who's the second guy? Is it Ikanuma? I don't know how to say his name. Yeah. I just butchered that, but yeah, it's a hard name. That's all. Yeah, I, I think it's Eric Izukuma or something Izukuma. like that. Yeah, uh, he's really good. So yeah, I got, yeah. Like I might shred us up a little bit, but we had Baylor at nine, Texas Tech at ten. Texas should win both these games comfortably. Um, hopefully, all right <laughs> at eleven. At 11, we had Rice, and 12, we had Kansas. I'm not going to talk about these teams. <laughs> We're going to win both these games, and if we don't, then I, I don't know what I'll do with myself. But, <laughs> but uh, Trevor, take it away. Kansas no, I know you have stuff to say about these two. Yes, I, I do have some things to say. So I think we all just kind of penciled in Rice as the, as the easiest game and Kansas as the least easy. But when you actually analyze it – Kansas is like in possibly the worst shape they've ever been in. Cause if you like read into the whole less miles firing and stuff, there was a ton of corruption going on 
behind the scenes <laughs> and it got really ugly. I mean, we're talking about like players like assaulting other players type things and like payments and just just nasty nasty stuff um so for a team that already sucked <laughs> they they you add that into the mix and it's just like oh god um my only thing is like if puka plays but i don't <laughs> i don't know anything about puka anymore that guy's such like a uh, you know an anomaly i i just i i don't know what to expect but that and rice actually by rice standards might have one of the best teams that they've had in a while um granted we should still beat them very easily uh, if we don't we got a serious problem at our hands but um i mean they they i think myers said they went three and oh last year while while we were off air for a second and um that's not true. I fact checked it, but they did blow out Marshall last year, which okay. was impressive. Yeah, they're not, they're, that's they, big, they that's big moves right there. They don't look bad for Rice. We'll we'll say that. So the fact that Kansas is, a, is in such a you know dumpster fire, even by their standards, I I might even change my rankings to Kansas as the lowest one. But also, I think we're are we playing at Kansas? No, we host no. this. Right, because we were supposed to play at Kansas last year, but it got canceled because of COVID. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know, man. They hired Lance Leopold, who's a better coach than Steve Sarkeesian, according to a graphic on 247. So well, You heard it here first. He's got, a lot. He's, got, he's got a worse team <laughs> to inherit <laughs> with bigger, bigger, bigger problems at hand. They think that Texas's culture is toxic. Just walk into Kansas is right. <laughs> so you can make an argument either way. Honestly, I might even give Rice a slightly. I don't know. It's tough. But Madrid, do no. you have any thoughts? No, I don't. But like <laughs> nine. We'll suck. We will suck. I'm I'm be honest. This look, this is the only those are the only teams I, I feel comfortable saying you suck because they will <laughs> just will not come back to bite me. Um, but 9, 10, 11, 12 are like the only four wins that I'm like for sure about. The other ones, eight through one through eight, like granted, we'll win more than four, hopefully. But like they those those make me a little shaky. But 9, 10, 11, 12, I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. It's kind of taking a step back. I mean, Baylor, Texas Tech, Kansas, and Rice are games that I'm comfortable, confident that we're gonna win those comfortably. But uh, one through eight, all the other games, those those could go either way. I mean, some more than others. But um, I think the goal for this season would be for us to split Oklahoma and Iowa State, get one of those, and then uh, go at least two Honestly, out of three. That would be, I think that might even be a big ask. Like, that, I'd be very happy if we split. I think yeah. we can split. I mean, Iowa State, mm-hmm. we can beat them. They're not – not, I think we can yeah. beat Iowa State for sure. I think we can, we can beat any of the teams. I think. Oh hell yeah! We're talking in terms yeah. of cans. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking. I'm thinking of us as the Tom Herman team. You know, those type of teams that can beat anybody, but also lose anybody. So, with that, we don't know what Sark's type of teams That's are. That's true. Play, how, how they're going to play up or down to competition. Hopefully, they play steady all the time, really good. But I think you can split one of those against Oklahoma and Iowa State, and then I think you try to get two. of out of three against TCU, West Virginia, and Arkansas, because I think it's going to be hard to sweep that. I mean, those are just three really tough road games against good teams. So two out of three there, and then beat Lafayette, um, and then try to sweep K State, Oklahoma State at home, and then from there, I mean, that well, that puts you at that puts you at nine and three. Yeah. So what, what I'm getting at is this is a tough schedule. It's going to be really hard to get double digit wins in the regular season. Sadly, uh, this is it's not set up good for us at least in year one um uh, under sark what do y'all think about the schedule just in general yeah i agree which is a big 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 problem i normally i don't think it would be it's like first year new coach like transition that's cool but the fact that we're in a bit of a recruiting lull and it seems like our texas magic has kind of faded out to where we can recruit these big time guys uh, mostly based off of history and clout. Um, This is for a whole nother video, so I'm not going to rant long about it, but like we really need to win, (laughs) like at least be competitive, at least win nine games next season to have any chance of landing um, some like 
much needed pieces. I mean, you can, I, I'm not saying that you can kiss this year's recruit recruiting class goodbye, but in terms of next year, like Arch Manning isn't coming to Texas if we win. I, I mean, honestly, nine games might not even be enough, but like if we definitely don't win at least nine games, Arch isn't coming. And if Arch doesn't come, I mean, Ruben Owens already decommitted. So, I mean, what we need to do well <laughs> for the future of our program. Unfort, like I said, for whatever reason, our clock has run out or, or you know, uh, whatever metaphor you want to use, like it's, it's getting harder for recruits to like bite on Texas anymore, even with the new coaching staff. Um, at this point, it's really just show me mode. And um, unfortunately, we got to battle a very difficult schedule um in a transition year with a new coaching staff um but hopefully <laughs> we got Bujan, <laughs> so hopefully that holds us up yeah uh we're, we're definitely in a recruiting lull it's everyone's in a wait and see type mode that's why obviously the OU game obviously is very important that that'll shift uh perceptions a lot at least make it competitive i was about to say we don't even have to win like if it's close that's still good for us outlook wise um but yeah tough schedule um that three four five uh tcu arkansas west virginia um if we get three if we can get all three of those that'd be a big win for the season i don't know if we will but that'd be a big win for the season because I think we can handle rest, uh, mostly everyone else on our on our rankings. But yeah, um, it's it's just a wait and see mode for us, and uh, uh, it's just one of those years for sure. I, I think we can go twelve and zero. I'm just gonna speak into existence. I mean, I'll, oh, I'll we can we absolutely. Why can. not? Why not? I mean, we got we got talent. We got good coaches now, so. Mm. I think our floor is pretty good at, at like nine and three. Like I think that's a that's solid. No, I, no, I don't no. Think it, <laughs> I you don't think that's solid? You don't think nine, nine and three as a floor? That's not solid for what we've been through the past years. That's not solid. The schedule is too hard for, for that floor. Maybe eight, and I think eight is generous. I'd say uh, seven is the floor. If we're talking floor, seven is the floor. I don't floor. Yeah, seven's the floor, I, I think. And I disagree, four. but okay. I'd say the, I'd say the roof, the, the ceiling is ten and two. Uh, yeah. but why not twelve and a? Why not twelve and a? Why not us? That's right. <laughs> we all just right. lost all credibility with that argument. No, no, we did it. All right, boys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in as always. This kind of went on way longer than we thought. Uh, I'm surprised even if y'all are still watching, but if you are, we really appreciate y'all. Um, we got more stuff coming out soon. Uh, the season's about to start. Big 12 media days are today as we're filming this. So it's getting real and uh, it's really exciting. Uh, the Sark era is underway and uh, we'll have more videos out soon. So thanks thanks for watching and uh, until next time. Hook them. Yes, sir. Can't see me, but I'm hooking okay.